Hey guys, welcome back to Alienation. I am so excited for today's episode. I cannot wait. I am very interested in the topic that we are going to be talking about today. But before we get into it, I actually want to show you guys some goodies. This is not sponsored in any way, but a short while ago, I actually received sunglasses from a company called TIJN Eyewear. And I was so excited to receive these because I love my sunglasses. I love my blue light glasses. I rely on them quite a lot. So when this company asked me if I wanted to test some of their products out, I was very excited excited to. After looking on their website, I noticed that their products seem to be very high quality, but with a very reasonable price. And I got sent three glasses to try out. And some time has passed, I have been testing these out and I absolutely love them. So I just wanted to share them with you guys. First of all, their products come in these really sleek boxes. All their packaging from what I'm aware is recyclable, minimalistic, eco-friendly, and each pair comes in these gorgeous, gorgeous cases. I just love these. So the first pair I have got a lot of use out of are these gorgeous sunglasses here. They are a sort of similar shape to the Ray-Ban glasses, but they are very dainty, but such a good quality. They are gorgeous sunglasses. I will leave the names and everything linked down below. I love how their frames are silver and these actually suit me. I have a very strange face shape, but in my humble opinion, I think they suit me quite well. They are super comfortable. They are stunning. I love these so much. I'm very excited for England to get it shipped together and start getting warm again so I can wear these. The next we have more of a fashion pair. These are a gorgeous sort of sagey dark green colour and they are just the clear lenses, more for a fashion statement because I am a redhead green suit so it goes with our pale skin it goes with my green eyes and I think these are so cute they're a really nice shape if you're watching I'm sorry about my ring light but again really good quality very sturdy I have a huge collection of glasses none of them quite feel like this and finally <laughs> my favorite favorite pair that I was sent I am obsessed with these I love wearing blue light glasses I suffer from headaches I'm an insomniac and blue light is not my friend <laughs> especially when it comes to researching topics and cases for alienation. I am staring at a screen all day every day and then when it comes to editing these videos I'm just staring at a screen all day and it is not good for my head, it's not good for my eyes. So when they asked if I wanted to have some blue light glasses I was so excited because the ones I had were just very cheap, very enough plastic quality and I feel so happy to have upped my game. But these are so dainty and so beautiful. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see them, but these are a beautiful, simple, thick gold framed glasses. But they have a really, really gorgeous sort of green, bluey shine to their lenses, obviously, because they are blue light filter glasses. But these are absolutely gorgeous. They may be a little bit dirty because I wear them all the time, but they have just made my editing life and staring at a screen life so much easier. I've noticed my headaches have been not as intense, not as horrible. I don't get as many. These are just incredible. I just wanted to quickly rave about them. If you wanted to treat yourselves to some very high quality gorgeous glasses, I will leave their information link down below. So thank you so much to TIJN for sending me these glasses. We are going to delve straight into today's episode. It is another true crime episode, but today we are going to be looking into the case of Isabella. Guzman or Guzman, Guz, Guzzy Guzman, whatever you want to pronounce it, I'm going to say Guzman. And this is an extremely interesting case. It is very confusing at the same time. It does contain some sensitive topics within this case. So little disclaimer right here. This episode contains topics and descriptions of events that some audience members may find disturbing. So listener and viewer discretion is advised. So this is actually a case from 2013. However, in 2020, this case absolutely blew up on the internet. But in 2020, Isabella Guzman was deemed the sweet but psycho girl that everyone on TikTok apparently fell in love with. So it was a huge community on social media, mainly on the likes of TikTok, some on Twitter, who they just became obsessed with Isabella. Don't get me wrong, she is a very pretty girl. She's young, she has a sweet looking face. However, there was a huge dark shadow over what had happened that involved this girl. So during the court case, there was some very interesting footage that was taken of Isabella and it was available to the public. And we all know the internet is one very crazy place and people managed to get hold of this footage and it went viral like there is no tomorrow. So it all resurfaced in 2020 and Isabella Guzman was the topic of a lot of people's TikTok pages. She became a TikTok sensation. Everyone was raving about her. It actually became a trend to copy her. I will get into that in a second. So there was some very crazy footage of her in court and like 
her behaviour. So people were wearing her orange jumpsuit and they were copying and mirroring the things that she was doing in court, which is very strange. However, the thing that worries me a little bit is that she became so many people's icon. People on TikTok turned her into a celebrity and that baffles me so much. These videos were made into sort of montage clips of her, bearing in mind she's in court for a crime that she committed. And people were turning them into these almost idolization videos where she was deemed super sweet and innocent and beautiful and gorgeous. And in the background, Ava Max's Sweet But Psycho song was playing along with it. So instantly you can tell she's obviously getting done for something because she's in the orange jumpsuit she's in court but everyone was jumping on and saying she's so cute look at her like i want to know who this girl is like i date her she's far too pretty to be a criminal and everyone was calling her sweet but psycho and sort of romanticizing this idea of her being a criminal and obviously with the whole internet people began spreading fake news especially because it was on tiktok tiktok does have a very wide range of ages that are on there a lot of people on there are very young so people were trying to defend her people came up with the most crazy claim saying that she was innocent and that anyone involved in this crime deserved it all because of the fact that she looked way too pretty to be a criminal so clearly a lot of the people who were idolizing her didn't really know what sort of horror filled crime she committed well if they did like my god what the fuck is wrong with people <laughs> but anyway Let's actually get into some detail and actually look at some of the events that led up to what she did and the reason behind her being in court. So Isabel Guzman was born on the 9th of June in 1995. So she is the same sort of age as I am. So she was the daughter of Yunmi Hoi and Robert Guzman. And from what I could find out, she had a really good childhood. Everyone said that she was just a normal child. She was a happy child. However, I just want to note her parents were Jehovah's Witnesses. This is sort of a branch of Christianity. However, it is known to be quite a strict religion and quite a strict faith. But that's just a little note. The family lived in Aurora, Colorado in the United States. And like I said, she grew up just a normal child with no issues. Unfortunately, when Isabella was quite young, her parents did decide to divorce. There's no sort of solid facts that I could find, but I did come across a lot of articles where people stated that shortly after the divorce, Yunmi Hoy, so Isabella's mother, did actually meet a man called Ryan Hoy. And I believe within a very short amount of time, they were married. So there were some rumours and some speculation that Yunmi Hoi could have potentially have been cheating on Isabella's dad, but we don't know for certain. But anyway, her mother remarried and Isabella hated her mother for this. She hated her. Like, I get it. Some people's relationships with their parents don't really go down well. But Isabella thought her mum was egotistical. She thought she was selfish. Like, how dare she do this to her dad? Which, I, if she was cheating on him, I, I get that. But she decided to start making her mother's life a living hell. She became extremely difficult. She was aggressive. She was violent. She was nasty. Bear in mind, at this time, she was only seven years old. She was like a baby. So anyway, around the age of seven, she was actually sent to live with her dad. And at this time, her mum was like, I ain't dealing with this. You're going to live with your dad. Again, I can't say this was solid facts, but there was reports that Robert, so Isabella's father, had actually moved on and he had a new lady in his life, a new woman. Again, don't know how truthful this was. There was a lot of speculation in this case, so I'm not too sure. But Isabella claimed that this new lady in her father's life was actually very abusive towards her. But anyway, she then had to move back in with her mother. So like I mentioned, her mother was a Jehovah's Witness. And Isabella claimed that when she was just 14 years old, when I think back, and these ages that I've mentioned in this case, seven years old, 14 years old, she's just a baby. But anyway, when she was just 14 years old, she claimed that she had chose to leave the faith. She had chosen to leave the religion and didn't want any part of it, which probably didn't sit well with her mother at all. So as life carried on, Isabella was just continually being a bit of a shitbag, really, not being a very nice child. And unfortunately, she chose to drop out of school right before her final exam. So goodbye qualifications, goodbye education. Again, probably going to piss the parents off. That'd piss any parent off. So there were a lot of claims and a lot of the family did state that Isabella was extremely ungrateful and was very, very spoiled by her mother. Everyone said that young me worked her absolute ass off just to provide for her. She worked exceptionally long hours and there are reports that her mum actually owned. I just, well, I don't know if she owned or if she worked there, but either way, she was working at a studio. It was called Bella's Portrait Studio and this was in the town centre of Aurora and sometimes Isabella would actually work there. So like I said, her mum was working long ass days. She'd do 12 hour shifts very often but her income just wasn't high I'm afraid and guess what 
Isabella resented her mother for this. Apparently she was horrible to her mother for this and she absolutely resented the fact that she wasn't a well-paid worker and she constantly made it clear that she was pretty much disgusted that she wasn't born or raised into a rich family. So let me just get this straight guys, if you are young and you are living at home with your parents and they are doing everything that they can to provide for you, they are working their ass off and you are ungrateful that they are not rich, you need to sit your ass down and give yourself a nice pep talk. You ungrateful fuckers. She was horrible to her mum, mocking her mum, nasty to her mum, when her mum is literally slaving away to provide for her. I'm a spoiled little ungrateful bitch. I'm sorry. Like, I try and keep my opinions to myself sometimes, but... Little bitch. If that was my child, I'd be like, right, off you go then. See you later. I'm not earning enough for you. Go get your own job, hon. So anyway, there were plenty of reports from neighbours and family members that young men were often seen leaving the property. So at this time, Isabella was in her late teens. She was approaching adulthood. So she probably had a lot of boyfriends in her life. And there were a few reports that at the time she did have a specific boyfriend. But whenever her mum would come home from work, they were seen to be sneaking out from the house and leaving. So if you're dropping out of school, if you're giving your mum shit 24-7 and you want to bring boys home under her roof, she's going to be pissed. Young me and Isabella were constantly fighting and her mother was terrified of her. Her own daughter, she was terrified of. She'd get violent at times. She would hit her. She would punch her, yell at her, call her names, you know, just being a lovely child. So we're going to fast forward to August the 27th. This whole event happened in such a short amount of time. It was insane. So surprise, surprise, Isabella and her mother had argued. They were kicking off as usual. And Isabella had turned very aggressive and she even spat in her mother's face. I can't even think of a situation where I'm angry enough to even spit in a stranger's face or someone I hate's face, let alone my own mother. I get everyone's relationship is different, but wow. Hey, mom, see ya. Young me chose to phone Robert because of how concerned and scared she was of Isabella. So I'm not sure if this was on the 27th of August or the 28th of August. This is in 2013. But Isabella actually chose to email her mother in a very threatening way and said, you will pay. Just what you want to see when you open your email address that morning, eh? Understandably, her mum called the police and the police did show up at the house and decided to speak to Isabella. So they sat down and they explained to her that she was now 18 years old she was legally an adult and that her mum has the right to kick her out of her house. It's her own home. And if she's been a shitbag, she has a right to kick her out. So on that same day, Robert, her dad, actually came down to speak to her because she was just out of control. So Robert thought, I'm her dad. I'll go and see if I can talk some sense into her. He went and talked to her. They sat in the garden and he said it seemed to go really well. He stated, quote, I went to talk to Isabella and we sat in the backyard looking at the trees and the animals. And I started to talk to her about the respect that people should have for their parents. And I was trying to let her know that she should be obedient to her parents, not rebellious, and that she should try to listen more and everything was going to be fine. And in the conversation, I thought that I'd made progress, unquote. He sat there with his daughter chatting away and she seems to be listening. She seems to be agreeing with him and thinking, yeah, OK, I will change up my behaviour. Well... Let's just see how well that went. So this was all on the 28th of August. Isabella, after her father had left and the police had already been and she already argued with her mum, emailed her mum, threatening whatever, she decided to head up to her room and play her music just like normal teens do. And she sort of stayed there for the rest of the day. So Ryan, her stepdad, was downstairs around 9.30pm, which is pretty late to be coming home from work. Young me came home and she was exhausted, like you would be. And she just wanted to shower. You know, when you've just done a really long shift, you're tired, you feel gross, you just want to shower, get in bed and chill. So that's what she did. She told Ryan she was going to go up and shower. So she headed upstairs. And Ryan said he heard the shower go on just like normal and didn't think anything of it until he heard a large thud and started hearing some very bizarre noises coming from upstairs and then he heard young me screaming his name asking for help so he starts running up the stairs towards his wife to see what on earth was going on and as he got towards the bathroom he saw Isabella stood there and she slammed the bathroom door shut so Ryan tries to force his way in he's instantly trying to open the door but it is noted that apparently Ryan could not open the door, that Isabella was able to keep the door shut. So obviously she'd locked it, but apparently she was able to keep it that way. We don't know what the door looks like. It could be a big ass strong door. We also don't know what Ryan's physique was like, but Isabella was an 18 year old girl. I'm not saying 18 year old girls aren't strong. Women can be strong too, don't get me wrong. But she was an 18 year old girl at the time and she was able to stop him from coming in the door. So 
take from that what you want. So instantly he was like, I need to ring the police. So he got on the phone, called 911. And at this point, he noticed that blood had begun to pool from underneath the door. For blood to be able to pool like that, there has to be some catastrophic injuries involved. And at this point, Ryan notes that he heard his wife say, what we believe is her final words, and that is Jehovah. So in the next moments after this, the door finally opened and Isabella was just stood there holding a knife covered in blood. And he noted that she was wearing a pink sports bra and sort of turquoise shorts just in sort of her chilling out clothes like you do on an evening. And apparently she just seemed very unresponsive. She stared straight ahead. She didn't acknowledge him at all and she just walked straight past him didn't say a single word carried on holding the knife and just headed her way out the door bye catch you later so ryan is still on the phone to the police and they are saying you need to perform cpr and ryan does attempt to give chest compressions but he does actually say he already believed that she was gone she was horrendously covered in blood and she was extremely unresponsive he said that she was just sort of staring blankly ahead and he kind of knew she was already gone there were reports that young me had been stabbed a hundred and 51 times. From what I'm aware, that is kind of false information. It turns out she was stabbed 79 times, which 79 times, that is still a horrendous amount. 79 times. And the autopsy actually confirmed this. She had 31 stab wounds to the face. The face. The face is not a big area. I have a big head, but trying to fit 31 stab wounds in that small space is something else it's horrendous bear in mind sure you've got a lot of fleshy parts on your face but that's like bone that's a difficult place to just be stabbing into and that is an extremely personal attack as well to go for the face and anyway 48 other stab wounds were found on her neck again not a big place to stab but 48 times and the reported 151 stab wounds in total that was a number that was lurking around they could potentially have just been other injuries that she sustained they were a lot of reports that her body was found with a baseball bat next to her so again i don't know how legit that is but she could have potentially been attacked with a baseball bat as well but she sustained potentially 151 injuries. If you think about the stabbing motion, that is very tiring. That is a lot of stabbing. Bear in mind, stabbing someone in flesh, in tissue, is quite difficult. There is bone in the way, there's tendons in the way. It is not an easy thing to be doing. But to be able to have the strength, the brutal force, and the willpower to want to stab someone 79 times is, is horrendous. Like The physical trauma that you would have to put yourself through to do that alone is... It's baffling. So the police did arrive and they found Yun Mi naked on the bathroom floor and she was already pronounced dead, which is just heartbreaking. So the police obviously knew who had done it. They didn't have to wait around trying to solve the crime. They knew exactly who had done it. So they instantly got on with trying to locate her because like I said, she just wandered off out of the home. So Isabella was technically a fugitive at this point. They were all searching for her and the police did actually receive a phone call and it was reported that someone had potentially found a dead body. Someone had seen a car and inside the car was what they thought was a dead body because it was covered in blood. So obviously the police had to head on down there to check this out. They're not just going to leave a potential dead body in a car park. And I believe this was around 11 a.m. ish the next day. At this point, Robert had been informed that his ex-wife had been brutally murdered. Imagine hearing that. Imagine hearing that your ex-wife had been brutally murdered by your own child. So anyway, back to this whole car situation. They found that the car was empty. Obviously, they were expecting to find a dead body there, but the car was empty. However, they did search it and they found some interesting items and they believed it could actually be linked to Isabella's case. So it turns out it was Isabella. She was sleeping in the car and I'm not too sure about the events that followed. There were reports of sniffer dogs being involved, canine unit, undercover cops and all that lot. They must have staked out this parking lot and they were able to arrest her. Again, I can't confirm this, but apparently she denied being Isabella. So they tried to arrest her. They tried to take her in for questioning. She was like, that's not me. I look similar, but it's not me. That's it. That's the one else. They know it was you, girl. Get your ass in the police car. <laughs> she was arrested and instantly Isabella threw out some wild claims. But Isabella instantly claimed that throughout her life, she was severely abused by her family. And a lot of her other extended family members were very shocked to hear this. They thought her parents were spoiling her, treating her very well. And she was just 
a rebellious teenager. And then she brought up the fact that she chose to leave her religion. And then she said that the abuse got worse because of this very shortly. So I don't know if it was two days or the day after she'd been arrested. I think it was two days after the initial incident. She was due to be charged for her crimes. However, the judge had to push back the case to later on in the day, push it back to the afternoon, because Isabella flat out refused to leave her cell. You are on trial for murder and you are acting like a spoilt brat. You are in your cell going, I'm not coming out of my room. You're not being called down for dinner after an argument with your mum. You are being called to go on trial for murder. It's not a time to be acting like a spoilt brat. I'm sorry, but no, just no. <laughs> We get to the whole fateful court day and the whole famous clips that were taken. I will play some of the clips, but as you can see, Isabella comes into the courtroom and she clearly doesn't give a shit. I get everyone coached to these things differently, but if that was me, I would be a mess. Guilty or not, I would be a mess. I would not want to be in an orange jumpsuit, in shackles, being told I'm getting done for murder, but she literally looks like she couldn't give less of a shit. And she's smirking away and a lot of this footage is what people got hold of and what a lot of people were recreating and reacting to on TikTok, which is so crazy. It's so bizarre. A lot of people did claim that she showed no remorse whatsoever, that she just seemed a little bit bored. She seemed to be smacking away, not really giving a shit while getting done for first degree murder. At one point, you can even see that she does appear to be crying. She appears to look a little bit upset. It is hard to see because it's from the side. But then very strangely enough, it's so eerie. She turns to the camera dead on stares at them for quite a while. It's creepy. She's just full on dead on staring this person out who's filming her. And then she does this weird thing where she points to her eyes, like under each eye. It's so weird. People do believe that she's either saying like, I can see you filming me. Some people believe she's actually pointing her eyes to show that there's no tears, that she doesn't care and she's not crying. But obviously take from the footage what you want. I honestly don't know <laughs> what she's doing. So anyway, Isabella was actually held without bond. But as she was 18, she was actually tried as an adult because she was an adult, she was 18. And she was facing charges of first degree murder as well as two counts of crimes of violence. But like I said, she was being tried as an adult. So that actually meant she could potentially be facing the death penalty. Like the death penalty was potentially on the table for this case. So it turns out Isabella actually pled not guilty to these crimes. But instead she chose to enter an insanity plea. And the judge granted her this. They actually agreed and said like, okay, off you pop. And he did accept this after she had a psychological evaluation. So this is where it gets a little bit tough. I just want to say, I have mentioned this in the past few cases I've covered. Obviously, I care a lot about mental health. I think it's extremely important. But for some reason, this case, some it doesn't quite add up and it doesn't quite set right with me. That's just my opinion. I am in no way saying that she is not mentally ill. I just find it a little bit bizarre that out of nowhere, they're like, oh no, she's like exceptionally mentally ill and she has to get away with this crime. However, she had a psych evaluation and they did find that she was mentally ill. And apparently she'd been suffering from this mental illness for a very long time. I don't know if this is true, but in some reports, I did find that apparently the illness that she was diagnosed with, a lot of the side effects and a lot of the symptoms don't really show in women until they're in their 20s. Again, I don't know if that's true, but that would mean that Isabella showed extremely early signs of this mental illness. However, she was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, which is terrible. Terrifying. She claims and other people who did her psych evaluation claim that she didn't know it was her mother that she was stabbing and she believed her mother was actually a woman called Cecilia. She apparently had to stab and kill Cecilia to save the world. If she was a paranoid schizophrenic, obviously that would make sense. If you're having extremely terrifying hallucinations and delusions and you believe that, then I get that. And I guess it would explain a lot of the behaviour towards her mother. And Isabella was sent to the Colorado Institution of Mental Health in Pueblo. I can't say that. In Pueblo. <laughs> Pueblo. Dr. Richard Pounds said that there was very obvious signs of her hallucinating. He stated she had been staring off into space. She'd been having conversations with, well, herself or people that weren't there. And it was noted that she'd laugh at herself. But anyway, that institute is where she's currently being held today. That is where she is sort of being rehabilitated. They're trying to help her. And that brings us to 2020. So that is obviously where the case was, became viral and everyone learned about it. At this point, she'd been in the institute for seven 
years because this happened in 2013. So Isabella is now 25 years old and she did an interview with C- CBS4. I'm not sure if that is a, like an, an American news channel. I'm not too sure, but she did sort of a virtual interview with them. I think it was November of last year she did this interview where she claims that she is now on her medication and that her sanity has been restored. It was not myself when I did that. I have since been restored to full health. I'm not mentally ill anymore. I'm not a danger to myself or others. She believes that she's better and she's no longer mentally ill. I just want to say, from my understanding, again, this could be wrong, so don't take it as 100% truth, but I'm pretty sure you cannot be cured of a mental illness. I believe that you can't be cured. However, there are a lot of very, very successful treatments that can help you control your mental illness, help you be better in yourself. But I was under the impression that you can't actually be cured, but she believes she is. And Isabella is actually appealing to leave the hospital. That's all she wants. She wants to be let back into society. She says she's no longer a threat. She wants to be back out there living her life. I did find some statements that she did say in this interview that did piss me off a little bit. Her mother was murdered, brutally murdered. And I'm just going to read from my notes. So she said, quote, the fight with my mom was terrible and I was injured in the process, unquote. I'm sorry, what? Your mother was murdered, yet you're caring about the fact that you were a little bit hurt in the process? I'm sorry, what? The fight with my mom was terrible, and um, I was injured in the process. I have the scars on my hands. Um, I don't know if you can see or not. So she's playing the fucking victim in this. I get it. If she's a victim to her mental health, I completely understand. But at the same time, surely she should be saying like, I shouldn't have done this. This is terrifying. I feel so bad for my mom. I can't take this back. I'm so, so sorry. But instead she's like, oh, I got hurt. I hurt my hand. Can you see? Can you see the scar? I'm sure your mom has a good few scars from that incident, my love. I'm trying not to get too opinionated on this one, but... Ugh. <laughs> That is not what you should be saying. I'm sorry. So I am just going to go into a few other things that did come out during the trial and stuff and during these interviews that she was doing. Again, there is no 100% solid truth. So take from it what you want. It's not very nice regardless. So in 2015, Isabella did claim that she was sexually assaulted while she was in this hospital. She said she reported it to the police and that the sexual assault was done by one of the hospital employees, which again, I don't know if this is true, but if it is, that's just wrong on so many levels so she said quote he asked me if I wanted to go in there and look through to get some clothing so I did the other patient left and he went in there and shut the door behind him unquote so apparently it happened in a cupboard of some sort this case was actually investigated by the hospital police but the Colorado Department of Human Services denied CBS4's request for the information on this case citing like the whole privacy laws and stuff because it was a hospital Isabella said there were two other incidents with that same employee employee so if if that is the case again that's just disgusting and that should not be happening that is a huge abuse of power but anyway she's actually seeking prosecution of the man who apparently did this to her however the district attorney's office in pueblo pueblo they say they never got such a case through in all those years that passed from the hospital police so one we don't know if it was true if it was just a claim or if the hospital were covering it up. So Isabella again states that it's been very, very hard on her emotionally and mentally. Obviously, she's already in there for her mental health. And if she was then going through that on top of it, that must be extremely difficult. So take from that what you want. I don't necessarily have an opinion on it. That is pretty much it. Is Isabella a threat? Well, yeah, she killed her mother. Is she still a threat? I really don't know. She is currently in a mental hospital, which is an extremely controlled environment. It is very routine. It is very to the book. They're made to take medication. Everything is monitored. And it is a sort of repetitive bubble of protection that they're in. They're in the same environment every single day where they are being looked after. I did hear a lot of reports of people who are in the sort of psychology field who have stated that anyone could go into that sort of environment and get into a routine very very quickly and within a very short amount of time be like well I'm all good now let me go pretty please because chances are in that environment you are going to get better obviously not everyone will but if that was that's the aim of the hospital to get you better chances are you are going to get better you are going to feel like you're no longer a threat so who's to say the second that environment changes that the second that person is sort of thrust out into the world put into a new environment where nothing is controlled, where there aren't these routines where people are constantly making sure that you are okay. Who's to say they're not 
instantly going to become a threat again. Just like we've seen in other cases, she might refuse to take her meds. We just don't know. I don't really know how I feel. It's such a tough one. All I know is at the end of the day, a life was lost, viciously lost. It was not a nice way to go. And someone should be held responsible for that, in my opinion. Should she have gone viral on TikTok? Fuck no. <laughs> Guys, stop doing stuff like this. To quote the Queen, Bailey Sarian, get better heroes. <laughs> people need to stop putting people's looks and people's appearances first. They shouldn't be putting that above everything else because she was pretty because she was innocent and sweet looking doesn't suddenly mean that she's not a killer she is a killer regardless of her mental state she has killed someone you will have to let me know your thoughts down below obviously it is a tough one mental health is involved someone's life was lost so keep it respectful keep it a safe place as always but i am very interested to know your thoughts mostly because my thoughts are a mess i don't really know how i feel about this one let me know if you think she should be allowed to go back into sight into a little can't speak into society on that note i'm gonna go thank you so so much for joining me this week i will leave all the information for tig and eyewear down below if you want to snap yourself up some really nice glasses if you are watching on youtube please give it a massive thumbs up leave me a comment down below and subscribe if you are not i would really really appreciate it if you are a listener please rate review share all the things that you can to help spread the word thanks for joining me i will catch you in my next one bye